I'm Earl Brown. I'm the executive director of the Jazz Journeys Educational Institute. I'm also the creative director of Eyes of Distinction, Photography, and Digital Media. So I wear a number of hats. I do a lot of consulting for jazz and for video and for photography and just a number of uh, different projects. Very, very passionate about the arts. I'm very passionate about the arts, but it's a passion that I've had for a number of years. I remember as a little boy, I found a radio. I was about 12 years old and I started listening to that radio and I started listening to broadcasters and I noticed that they seemed to enjoy what they did and I said that's the field that I want to go into and I just kept listening and listening and taking notes and I got to talking to people about it and I found out in the process that it wasn't as easy or as simple as it appeared to be that there's a whole lot of work that goes into it a lot of homework uh, I found out that I needed to understand English pretty well. I also needed to understand uh, math. The reason I need to understand English is I need to understand um, um, just how to put sentences and things together and how to communicate effectively. I had some of those qualities. I loved communicating. I loved giving uh, lectures and, and, and speeches and I loved writing. and So all of that stuff was kind of a natural for me. but something I, I couldn't take for granted. I had to continue to, to work hard at it to take everything to another level. And that was one of the keys that a lot of the educators that I, and, and, and people that I was around, they were always taking me and encouraging me to go to another level. Don't be satisfied. Be satisfied only for a moment, but don't, don't, don't be satisfied. Keep moving, keep moving on to the next level. So I just kept moving on, moving on, giving a lot of speeches, talking. I would pretend that I was on the radio and stuff like that. I created these imaginary audiences, and I loved it. And finally, when I got to college, um, I, I, I knew that it was going to be radio, television, film. But I also knew that I needed something to fall back on, so I looked at marketing as a minor. And, and I'll never forget, I went into this radio station in Detroit. I was at Wayne State University, and I went into this radio station. I was a freshman, and I concocted this idea, which was real, but it was also a promotional thing that I was using to leverage. And it was a project that we were working on for our radio station. So I went to this radio station. I got an appointment with the program director. And I said, we're doing this event, and it's a public service announcement uh, that we need your help with. And could you air this for us? And the program director said, fine. We, you know, we believe in promoting the colleges and universities and students and so forth. And he said, we'd be glad to air it for you. And I said, oh, by the way, my major is radio, television, film. And I've been listening to your radio station. And I love it. I'm very, very impressed. And one day, I'd like to work here. And he said, really? I said, yeah, I think I can be a hell of an asset. Those were the exact words. I think I can be a hell of an asset to your station. And I said, I think I could be an asset to your station. And he said, do you have a resume? And I said, you know, I just happened to have one accidentally on purpose. And I reached into my briefcase and I pulled out a resume and he looked it over and he said, do you have an audition tape? And I said, oh my God, I just happened to have, mind you not, I've already been prepared that you gotta have a resume, you gotta have an audition tape. So I said, I just happened to have an audition tape accidentally on purpose. And he said, hold on a second. He went back into one of the studios and he listened to it and he came back and he said, are you prepared to do a live audition right now on the spot? And I said, where is the studio? And he gave me a script and he said, I'm going to give you five minutes to look over it and we're going to roll with it. And we did so. And he came back and he said, you know what? You're right. You can be an asset to the station. And he said, we'll be back in touch with you. It took a while. It took about a month. 
and he called me back and offered me a job. And interestingly, I initially was applying for a job as a newscaster because I love documentaries. I love telling stories, the real story about what's going on. Uh, but they offered me a job as an on-air personality playing the music because they noticed that I had a knowledge of the music and then also to double as a newscaster with newscasting scripts throughout the, uh, the program. And after they offered me the position, I accepted and the rest was history. When I was coming up, I was taught that you respected your elders. I don't see that as much anymore. And it really saddens me. I was thinking the other day about a play that I had seen, and the play was called Halley's Comet. And it talked about an old man who had gone up to the top of a hill one night. And he was looking around, and he was looking around. And all of a sudden, he said, I found it. I found it. I found you. And he said, my grandfather told me that if I came up to this hill on this night, that I would find you. He says, and there you are, Halley's Comet. He said, well, Mr. Comet, the people from the village sent me up here to um, find you and come back and tell a story. And he said, now, the last time I saw you was with my grandfather. He said, and I was six years old, Mr. Comet. He said, but I am much, much older now. He said, Mr. Comet, a lot of things have happened, so I'll tell you the story. He says, uh, number one, I got old. He said, Mr. Comet, we have cars now, and people are fighting about parking space. Can you believe that, Mr. Comet? He said, I, I saw two guys arguing, and the guy pulled out a gun and shot the guy over parking space, Mr. Comet. We didn't even have parking space the last time I saw you. He said, well, a whole bunch of other things happened, Mr. Comet. I got married four times. He said, um, got a whole bunch of kids. And, um, you know, I tried, but tried to do my best with them. Um, but most of them are dead. He says, uh, my first son, he got killed in a war called World War II. Next one, he got killed in a thing called Korean War. I don't know what they were fighting about halfway around the world. Third thing, our son that was in a, in, a, in a war called Vietnam. Still trying to figure that one out, Mr. Comet. And fourth thing, Mr. Comet, was a thing called uh, a war on civil rights for equality amongst black people and people of color. He said, but now, Mr. Comet, we're killing each other in droves. And it really saddens me, Mr. Comet. He said, so. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'll go back now and tell the people the story that I saw you, but I'm glad that you listened to me because I have a story to tell you. And by the way, Mr. Comet, when you come again, I won't be here. But thanks for listening to me. And that was the play that I saw. And that play got me to thinking again about again, the disrespect that we have for not only our elders, but just people in general, babies. I mean, it doesn't matter what age, teenagers. We're just killing them all. And what I know of organizations like Heirloom TV that say, wait a minute, we're going to go back and we're going to tell the story, the positive things that are happening. And we're going to push these and project these stories out into the future so that people can know what it's supposed to be like, what it was like, what's going to be like, and what it's supposed to be.